Hi everyone, and welcome to A Gem of a Secret Podcast. My name is Donatella, my secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. How are you doing tonight, Coco? Apparently my last name's Holiday. Um, Holiday. Um, <laughs> I'm actually somber and in my feels a little bit, but actually, you know, I have a couple days off, so I'm happy about it. Yeah. You know? You're living. still on your drag break. I am on my drag break. It has been a really interesting journey, I have to say. But before I forget, um, what are you wearing this evening? Well, you know, since we are officially making the transition into fall, I (laughs) am just dressed up as a giant uh, red leaf. (laughs) <laughs> it's very Canadian of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a giant red leaf. A giant red leaf. Um, if I stand against our white wall, then I look like the Canadian flag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, so I saw Donna getting ready, and mm-hmm. I decided I wanted to be in a red evening gown. But since I don't have one, I'm wearing a red blanket wrapped around my body like a poncho. It's like oh. a fashion poncho. Nice. I yeah, and it. then like red earrings. But that's it. Fashion poncho. <laughs> Just fashion poncho forward um um one question i have for you before Uh we because we have an interview today that we're going to be doing later yes well coco is going to be doing an interview yes um how has it been being back online um you're like i already deleted it last week where have you been girl (laughs) um it's it's i don't share as much as i used to Mm -hmm. and i've have that whole like time hop thing enabled so I'm like seeing old posts Ugh. and then I, I'm deleting old posts of mine that I'm like really? I was really in my feels and stupid at this point yeah and usually they're like ancient posts that I'm like ugh like why why was I being so dumb and emotional you're like why why were my feelings just that loud in yeah that specific why did moment? everyone need to hear this and <laughs> And you know what? 23-year-old Donna would have said everyone needed to. So Why did everyone need to hear this? <laughs> that is so funny. So I'm a little more choosy, I guess. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's fair. I mean, yeah. that's absolutely fair. And I think that, like, I mean, it's, this is kind of what's interesting, too, as we do this podcast, too. There's going to be moments where we listen back to old episodes, because I do every once in a while. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, why did I think that at that time? Oh, gosh, that is not how I feel today. Yeah, or, like, the ones where I'm, like, just extremely stoned and, like, don't really have much great input to offer the entire episode. <laughs> Those are fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think um, it's great that we have this little time capsule of social media yeah. and now our podcast, but... But also, I am just waiting for the day when uh, something stupid that I've said is going to, like, resurface. Yeah. (laughs) Me too. Me too. And I can be like, I've grown as a person, and I was really dumb for thinking that in that moment. (laughs) <laughs> same for me same for me and my i'm still doing it online today and like my tidbit before we get to our interview is that i was super in my feels today um uh that hbo series we're here um is airing back in grand Jun- not airing they filmed it in grand junction and it brought up a lot of old emotions on top of the fact that people have been writing me about it Mm -hmm. to like want to talk about it and i'm just like well i'm not there so i don't know what's going on and i was like in the limited things that i've heard i was like it just it sounds like it's going to be a really positive experience for that community yeah like that's great for them (laughs) i don't it's like i don't really know what kind of reaction people are expecting out of me for it um per se like i've heard some things but like at the end of the day, like, there's a reason I moved, right? Yeah. So, like, it's super cool that that place is getting that notoriety. It'll be interesting to see how they film it and what goes on in it. Um, it'll be interesting to see old places, maybe old friends. Yeah. Uh, on TV. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but that's the reality of yeah. where it's at. So It's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. There you go. It's bittersweet. Yeah. All right. So, um, without further ado, let me ask Donna, how are you doing this evening? Oh, Coco, I will let you know after this brief commercial break. I'm doing great, actually. Let me just tell you now. Let's go to commercial. (laughs) Hey, Portland, I have exciting news. On October 30th, and yes, that's the day before Halloween, me and Touche Duche are bringing out Priscilla Chambers from Dragula and the Vixen from Drag Race to party on the stage at Local Lounge. 
which will then lead into an after party that goes directly into Halloween. And then on the day of Halloween, we have two brunches available for you it's where Priscilla so Chambers will be performing at those. So get your tickets now. You can find them at localloungeofficial.com. We hope to see you there. It's a podcast with Coco and Don, a telepodcast. Tune into what they tell you podcast with Coco and Don, a telepodcast. All right, everybody, and we are back from our break. I did kill Donatella. No, I'm just joking. She's actually doing something for Maybon, which would be yesterday as of the filming of this. But it's my pleasure that I get to introduce our special guest for today. Um, it's Tono, the rapper. Hi, Tono. Hi, that's me. That's T O. Yes, it is you. Oh, the tilde is silent. Please don't say it out loud. I don't even know if I've ever known how to say the word tilde. Til- you did it. You just did it. It's like Matilda, <laughs> but without the ma. Oh, that's actually easier to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, the funny thing is, so I I don't actually remember how I met you. I just remember, I just remember thinking that you always had like a really cool sense of fashion. And I was just like, oh my God, oh my he's God, never going to want to be my friend. Oh, wait a minute. That is like the highest compliment you could give me ever. Because sometimes I feel like I jump into my closet and just come out of it. <laughs> I mean, but it always looks like it, like, because even yesterday when we were hanging out, just because, like, I love to just jump around and not actually ask any of my questions, um, we were at these auditions together, and, like, Tona's, like, trying to plan an event while I was being overwhelmed and depressed, and Tona's, like, wearing this cool, like, like flannel, and, you know, like, a shirt around his waist, and, like, doing this whole thing, looking like he was, like, a whole vibe, and, like, I was looking there, like, a depressed, drunk mess, as I do, and I was just like, oh, my God, he dresses so cool, and I look like a slob. <laughs> Thank you. You should see me on my slob days. So today was almost one, and then I took a shower. <laughs> Party. Yeah. So um, the first question I have for you is how long have you been practicing music, or how long have you been performing? So this is, a, this is like, a loaded question, because, like, if we take it back to, like, when was the first time, like, I stepped on stage, like, I was probably, like, 11, 12. And I was like, oh, this is this mm. is it for me. Like, I, and... Like, I would take, like, acting classes during the summer, and, like, they would put on shows at the end of the summer. And then, you know, I moved to Oregon, and then when I started high school, I was doing theater the whole time. And then that blossomed into doing theater in, in college, learning how to be an actor, and then uh, essentially dropping out of college because I was like, oh, this is this sounds awful. I am not white, nor skinny, nor <laughs> am I straight. So my options are very limited in the world of acting, um, you know, professionally, at least like the way that I was trying to pursue it. Uh, but I did get into like music production in college, which led me to making my own music. And then I think the summer after college, I actually performed at uh, the Portland Pride Festival on the main stage uh, at the uh, the waterfront. I've done it like twice now. Wait, really what fun, year? Like, 2019? That was back in like, no, that was way back in like 2017. I think, yeah. Oh, I think that was like the boom. That's kind 2017 of was the boom for me because I was also in a, a singing competition right out of high school. So 2016, I was in a, mm-hmm. a called Portland Teen Idol uh, that I made it to the finals of, and so that also kind of catapulted some stuff because I was able able to perform some original music at the at the finale. Wow, that's insane! I didn't that's know that you've done all of those things. Mainly because I just don't, like, I don't ever research, by the way, I know my listeners are like, they're like, of course you don't research any of this stuff. I like, I because I like the conversation to be organic, but I know I could research people's past, but I think it's cool when they try to tell me things. <laughs> I didn't know that you were involved in all of that. That's, like, kind of amazing. Yeah, some of that past is, is buried, because, like, I, like, if you go search far enough on Instagram, you can find some stuff. Facebook, I never really used, but when I used it, it was back in, like, high school. So, like, there are some things you could definitely, like, peek through in there. But yeah, there's some, some sometimes there's like little little lost eras of my life where I have like memory gaps. Sometimes I think it's I think it's because I live in a legal cannabis state. Um, <laughs> so like, oh my god! So, sometimes the social media will help me like you know get back to those memories. I'm like, oh yeah, I did that. Wow. I think it's the drinking. The drinking is where the memory lapses are coming from, dear. I here's the thing. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't. I, I drink, but I don't drink that much. If I'm ever out at like a bar nowadays i will have maximum two maybe three drinks like i very seldom get drunk like i was at the eagle like last weekend and like i got drunk for the first time in like a while 
You know, it's, it's funny. I um, So the Eagle is like what would be like typecasted as the bare leather bar in town. Mm-hmm. Um, even though it is kind of a melting pot of a lot of different personalities and people and different groups and different kinks. Uh, but yeah, that's what that bar is. And it's actually a really cool place. They have porn on the TVs. <laughs> One of my favorite parts. That and getting being, being bitten in the corner of the bar part. is my second favorite part. What do you mean by being bitten? You said that you... recently. You said that to me yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've met this group of friends a couple of months ago. Right. And like, they've opened the doors for me, you know, for a lot of things. Some things that I already knew about myself, but then like have explored you know, sexually, kink-wise. Um, and one of those things is being bitten. And let me tell you, <laughs> I posted mm-hmm. a, I have a, I have a, I have a couple, I have like, a, I run a lot of Twitters. I have a private Twitter, which you will not be getting. Uh, I have a private Twitter and I posted a picture. <laughs> of me. I'm like, I, look at me, I'm bruised. And someone was like, oh my God, did you get in a fight? And I was like, no, 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 no. These are consensual, consensual bruises. I got bit up. Oh, okay. Mostly on my so shoulders. you mean actual and, biting? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the Eagle's the place to okay, do it. So makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense because, like, biting is obviously not considered to be uh, sexual in nature in that, like, in the sense of, like, um, nudity and whatever. But at the Eagle, it's kind of, like, fine. And also for people to know, like, nudity is kind of legal in Portland as long as, it, as long as it doesn't have, like, a – there's, like, a little bit of rules around it, but nudity is kind of legal here. So It I mean, is, it like is legal to be uh, naked on the streets as long as your intent is not to arouse. So basically you can't have a boner or, like, be sticking things up yes. your ass. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I did notice that you became part of the pup community or became a pup or were a pup. I'm not quite sure. Can you explain It's that? something that's Actually, been like... the first one I think we've had on here. So, oh, yeah. this is fun. Um, I'm more new to the pup community in college. I had a friend corrupt me and like I ended up going to like I, I went. To, so did you know that Portland has its own uh, furry convention? I wouldn't be surprised. So it does. It's called Forlandia. And he DJs there. And he was like, can you like take pictures of me at this event? Like back when I was doing a lot of photography. And I was like, yeah, sure. And so I go to this event and I'm like, oh, these bitches can party. These bitches are fun. Some of these bitches are hot. And um, I've like low-key been in that community ever since. And then like, you know, the, the Venn diagram for people that are in the furry community and people who are in the pup community are like a circle with two crescent moons on the side. You know what I mean? And so, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's it stems from that. I found like the pup community through through the furry community and then was not able to like actually interact with any of them for real until that one faithful night at the Eagle. That was just happenstance. Like one night I went out and they were like, yeah, this is our first uh, um, like PDX Palm meetup since covid and i was like oh okay well i'm here now and then i started going to events ever since that's really cool i i've always really been fascinated by the pup community pup community i actually um i don't think i've actually said this out loud to literally anyone so might as well do it on a podcast that my mom listens to um i found myself two years ago maybe um, I have a friend who was a pup and I added him. And of course, Facebook does the algorithm. We're like, oh, well, you like this pup. You must like all pups. And they were kind of right. Like <laughs> I started adding like almost every single pup online that kept getting suggested to me because I was so attracted to the, for me, the ambiguity, I guess, mm-hmm. because like the mask makes it to where it takes away all of the identifiers that you normally get attracted to in a face. And I'm a very face attracted person. And I really appreciated the fact that like, it was like all personality. I, I really loved that aspect of it. Um, I loved the, and I know it's funny. It's not, it's not, not even what it's about as much as I did just love that part of it. Like mm-hmm. I loved being able to build connections with people who you don't even really know what they look like. Yeah. That, the like, ambiguity that part is, cool can be fun especially in yourself too like my favorite part about it all is like the the headspace part and the vibes you know it's like you hanging with the right right people and you know you you have the right headspace you like kind of let go a little bit and i'm a person that's on like all the time 100 percent. like i'm like no matter what yeah i overexert myself in a lot of different situations (laughs) and including Mm -hmm. you know know, being a pup i can overexert myself in ways too but it's it it's very it's very freeing you know, we want to get in the the right space. 
What's the difference between biting and a hickey? Or is it the same thing? Here's the thing. Okay. So I've had a couple experiences in the last couple of weeks where I had, I've, I've had <laughs> close experiences with both of them, right? The biting, I feel like, is more about the pain. And I don't like – and I'm not, like, much of a mask. Well, I guess I am a bit more of a masochist than I used to be. Um, but, you know, you bite to bite. It's it's that, like, sensation, like, that piercing sensation it can, it can be. But, like, with hickeys, mm. like, I don't know. It I guess it has something to do with the suction, which I used to thought I liked. But then somebody, like, tried to give me a hickey, like, a week or two ago. And, like, they were sucking on my neck. And I was like, I kind of want you to just chomp on it. Like, I don't <laughs> Like it's a little, it's oh, a little slimy. I guess, yeah, I'm like, ugh. It's just like a slug. That actually makes a lot of sense. I get it. Okay, cool. Like, so um, people are like, aren't you supposed to be talking about his music? I can talk about whatever oh, yeah, I want. It's my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about both. I'll talk about, I mean, I've I talked mean, uh, quite a bit about my music on my own podcast, but like, I haven't really talked about a lot about the pop stuff. But also, please don't ask me about my music. <laughs> yeah. Well, what um, what is your podcast, actually? Ooh, my podcast is a bangers podcast. That's a bangers uh, with a Z and an exclamation point podcast. My best friend and I host it. My best friend is Hunter. They are the CEO and creative director of Baines.co, Baines Company. Um, they do all of our graphic design. I do all of our uh, like the our audio work, and then we talk about every week uh, pop culture. Um, and like happenings in our lives like if we got a self promo we'll do that for 20 minutes and then uh every week we compile a playlist of the newest songs of the week and then we dissect it at the end of the podcast along with, as well as presenting you with that playlist it's able to listen to uh on spotify that's awesome that's so cool i didn't even know that yeah we'll put a link on our website at gem of a secret podcast.com uh to your podcast um so people can find out and we'll also put your social media up there uh, what is your social media we'll just do that now um so it is at tono the rapper uh t-o-n-o the rapper on literally everything i'm on tiktok i'm on twitter i'm on instagram um you know my alter ego anthony brown xxx if you want to pay four dollars a month for some certain content i don't know um but yeah oh and my my, my music you can find on all all major streaming platforms t-o-n-y-o Tilda Silent. Yes, absolutely. So um, I do want to talk about your TikTok just from a personal standpoint. <laughs> um, so me and Tono got into a huge heated argument because Tono on – so I got stuck in Tono TikTok, and I do mean Tono TikTok. Like, Tono TikTok! Because Tono's obviously on uh, – Tono's obviously in Bear TikTok um, and somewhat of the King TikTok or whatever. But no matter where I ended up, because I could be like like five lesbian – videos about activism and hating men or something and then literally it would like be tono for the next like three videos and i'm like <laughs> either in like tiktok is broken <laughs> or like like i don't understand what's happening and then like literally it was like a week solid and then i saw tono again and i was just like because you know it's like that social media advertising where you literally say something out loud and your phone's in your pocket i was like tono i finally got out of your tiktok and then literally the next time i opened tiktok it was all tono again just psych nobody else <laughs> nothing else i was like okay okay cool tiktok that's fine but actually tono has good content but we fought because tono said he didn't like hamilton and i think that that makes him a horrible monster of a person oh, oh my god listen i have many <laughs> many problems with the hamilton verse but you know i can just start advertising it with this baines co sticker that i have that says stop lin moel miranda a collation for change I think we oh should my put a stop gosh. to him, and I would like to collaborate with Stop James Corden, a coalition for change. Um, I think we should put these men to a stop and never let them speak again. Um, if Lin Manuel Miranda wants to write things, fine, so be it. If I ever hear him or see him ever again, I feel like I will implode, and I will sue him for that. But I James like Corden, James Corden James, in the sense. Listen, James Corden, if he would just shut up and stop everything and just said nothing <laughs> did nothing in general be fine he's so but i cute. really like how i like how goofy he is i do too and then it just takes it sometimes it's just too much <laughs> it's too much i actually did you ever see did, wow this is gonna be that podcast today did you ever see when he was um he did his like because he does those driving interview things right oh yeah the carpool um, karaoke loved those yeah the carpool karaoke and he did it with lady gaga and it was and I think it was like right after Super Bowl or something or right before one of those things. And they were singing together and she looks at him. She goes, you're flat. <laughs> and like, you can, 
Because <laughs> she's so classically trained. She's like, um, you're flat. Oh my god, I would be and so I- afraid to ever sing in front of Lady Gaga because I know she would say that to me. <laughs> No, she, oh my gosh, like, even when she was on Drag Race, she literally did a master class backstage, and she was just like, she's like, um, I would have liked it if you did blah, 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 blah. Does that make sense to you? Like, a true master class. Yeah? <laughs> okay, we're good. And mm-hmm. then she scratched it off. She's like, and then you over there. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, wow. I was like, getting read for filth by Lady Gaga will make me quit drag. I mean, that's, there's no other way to do that. Um, sorry, side note. Um, wow, and the, by the way, um, you need to send me a picture of the sticker so I can put it on the website so people can see it. I Hunter has not put this on their website again yet, but I need them to. I need this. <laughs> I need this to be on everybody's hydro flask, water bottle, laptop. Um, I need this to be on phone poles in the streets. Okay, we need to work together to stop Lin Manuel Miranda. But I think "Satisfied" is one of my favorite songs in the world. Listen, that's fine. That's okay for you. Okay. You can do what well, you want. I, okay, it's okay for everyone. No. As we just end up fighting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, um, I... Okay, so let's get back to you specifically, even though I was talking about your TikTok. Follow Tona on TikTok. He actually has a lot of great content. Let's talk about your newest song that you came out where you did you did the dance with the two other boys where I thought it was like super sexy. Oh, that song's yes. called Dog Whistle, isn't it? Yes. Ain't no cat call. It's a dog whistle. Non-derogatory. Yeah, well, apparently me and Tono just learned, because I'm allowed to say it, I'm black. Apparently we learned that dog whistle apparently is a negative uh, racial connotation. It's always great to learn new things and whatever. It can be used in a negative context. Yeah, it can be used in a negative context. And I'm not trying to diminish anybody's experiences who have trauma or associated associated or related to that phrasing. I had just never heard that. Tono brought it to my attention yesterday. And And I had to literally Google it because or like yeah, literally and that I, morning. I mean, yeah, I want everybody to remember because we always talk about cancel culture on this podcast. Remember to give people grace for things that they don't know about. Because I've been alive thirty five years, and that was the very first time I've ever heard that. Um, so anyway, let's go back to your song, Dog Whistle. Um, tell me how you came clarify, up with it. Tell me how you wrote my, it. So it's not my song. It's actually uh, the artist High Yellow, who is black, and who also did it with Estevan the God, also black. Uh, and gay rappers they're amazing i love the both of them high yellow is one of my favorite underground artists at the moment uh because he just takes a theme and he runs with it like there's this song and then there's also the song called talking truck which is about like cooking up with construction workers and it's chef's kiss but dog whistle i fell in love with because i like the first time i heard it i was like oh like this is like everything that I like kind of want gay rap to be right now. Just like unapologetically gay, unapologetically kinky and just like completely like their own. And so I reached out to him because we, uh, me and Hunter actually put this on our podcast and I was like, Hey, hi, Ella, let me feature on dog whistle. Um, and he was like, bet. Okay. And then it happened. Um, and I had actually written dog whistle before, uh, like before my experiences with the kink community so like i feel like i kind of just manifested it for myself you know what i mean uh but i had a lot a lot of fun writing this verse like my boyfriend at the time was like you need to make this verse like dirty dirty and i was like okay let's do it i'd never really written anything that was like like well i guess i have i did a remix of good form once by uh ninky minjaj um but i really let go with this one because i was like i now have i have things to work with you know, because I've, you know, been kind of a pup for a while, but haven't been in with the community um, until recently. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so you said that you didn't, wait, so you were featured, on, okay, there were three things in there that now don't connect to my brain. So you were featured <laughs> on it, or you wrote something for it, or it was somebody else's song, I'm confused. So this was High Yellow's song at first, so High Yellow and Estevan the God released this um back in let me see let me see let me see um dog whistle came out may 7th and then i we featured it on the podcast and then um the next month on july 23rd the remix was out um so i had hopped on a remix i was like hey hi yellow can i like can i I add to this like i i'm like i'm inspired i like i wrote a whole verse and i was like hey this is what i wrote can i be on the song and he was like yes Cool. I love that. So for um, 
By the way, so I will say this, and I, I like, and if you didn't write this, but actually I think you did write this, but when you did your TikTok verse of, uh, oh my God, what's that song by Megan Thee Stallion? Thought. Oh, was it Thought Shit? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, did you write that? The, yeah, I wrote that one too. I, I did a thought oh shit remix God. with uh, this artist, Bryce Quartz, who I, this, uh, High Yellow is also on the song, and uh, Big Daddy Karsten's on the song with us. It's a SoundCloud exclusive. Um, but yeah, that, that one I wrote around, like, right after this one. So I was like, I'm going to keep the ball rolling. I, I got more in me. It was insane. It was when you wrapped it on your TikTok, I was like, okay, this is a little too good. I was like, <laughs> what is this? Oh, my God. And it was filthy oh god it was filthy in the right way like <laughs> so dirty and i loved it to death it was so good um is there any way a... that you could like oh i have what? it pulled up is that what you're about to ask <laughs> yes oh my god do you have a, do you have any any uh words or bars that stick out from you that you can remember right now and i can do that bar actually just um, kidding <laughs> do the whole thing do the whole thing do the, do the whole thing. thing okay okay all right yeah Hands on my knees, taking dick down my throat shit. If you hear a bar about a belly, then I wrote it. Vroom, vroom on the dick. Yes, bitch, I wrote it. Take it all the way to my lungs like I took it. I'm about that fetish life. See me in hoods in the dead of night. I blow my load like it's dynamite. I think we should fuck what you better try. I'm good with my tongue. Yeah, yours walks, bitch, mine runs. Rah, freeze you like stun gun. Brah, I want you to ice my gums. Yeah, you can hit me up on grammar because I'm hardly on scruff. I'm be talking this by yo when I'm taking it rough. Leaving bruises with the dead is like, that's not enough. You make sure I hit the poppers and you put on the cuffs. Um. Hands on my knees, taking dick on my thought shit. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's so good. I love it. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, my gosh. I loved it. I lit- I showed it to all of my friends. I was like, oh God, watch you. this. I was like, this is insane. <laughs> I just, it's because, like, when you think about it, just because I always have these moments where it just really sucks that um, I've actually been really thinking, as I always unpack trauma on this podcast. It, it really does suck that we live in such a, and it's not necessarily um, a sexually like um, repressed bubble. It's more that queer experiences are not celebrated enough to where that verse, if I was in high school, like listening to Megan and the Stallion, right, would be amazing for me, right? Like that would be me like being like, oh my gosh, like this, like it's super hot. It's super sexy, like whatever. And it's not necessarily talking about the pure twink experience. Right. And it's not like, it's one of those things of where when we were in high school, we never got the opportunity to like, really like find ourselves because we were finding out how to come out of the closet. Right. When you started recognizing that you were attracted to, you know, not girls or something like that. And even though I'm bisexual and I was attracted to girls, I recognized that I was also attracted to this whole other group of people. And and it sucks because sometimes, like, it would be great for us to have had music like that or dirty lyrics or things that excite you. And now I'm 35 years old wa- watching this on TikTok and being like, oh, my God, I love this so much. And thinking about how the 16-year-old me would have just died over that, like, and just super loved it. But, no, we had, um, what's his name, Johnny McGovern coming out with, soccer practice and crap like that and don't get me wrong soccer practice soccer practice is fun and the music that johnny mcgovern made is fun it's just it wasn't like lyrically like actually i'm not gonna say anything negative about johnny mcgovern they did a really great job it was camp it was camp and you weren't looking you were looking for a little bit more than camp yes you were looking for camp with some structure i was looking for actually in and not even much is actually, I agree with you. Yes, I was looking for campus structure, but more so what I was looking for is I actually wanted it to be on the nose. And I know that we like live in a society now where mm-hmm. we're like, oh, we need it to be like more lyrically like ambiguous. And we kind of wanted to like have a message. But sometimes like I wanted the queer version of Beyonce's listen. Like that's what I wanted. Like <laughs> I wanted it to talk about how you started out, you started off open. And the reason he's leaving and your, his stuff is to the left is because you started off open and then he was more attracted to that other guy. Then you try to do a thruple. It didn't work out. And then now he was like going behind the back and breaking the open relationship rules. And you're like, you know what? I don't need this in my house right now. And I get it. We have two puppies that we call our kids, but like, I want him to like, 
go ahead and get gone because like I'm gonna find somebody who wants to you know be safe in the rules of the throuple. Like that's that's the music I want at 16. <laughs> yes, that's the music I want now. Like I write <laughs> shit like this, and like I'm writing other shit that I'm writing because like I'm I'm seeking out all of like the the music that I listen to. I try to seek out music that like you know resonates with me and my experiences. Uh, and sometimes I like some some people will get close but like if it, no one hits it on the mark I, that means i have to make it that means i have to put that out into the world so maybe if somebody else is like you know wanting that and like wanting to hear about this experience they can't i'd love that i was told recently by a friend of mine the bisexual anthem by domo wilson i believe their name is um is two on the nose and I was like, you know why like the bisexual anthem is too on the nose? It's because we literally just don't talk about it enough to where it actually can be. <laughs> so, like, mm. That's so that's so ridiculous about our community, how we can't we can literally just we don't even have the music of where like patty cake and crap like that to where we can't even like necessarily have that stuff into our zone, which just sucks. But getting back to your music, um, by the way, and I'll try to actually I'll feature some SoundCloud leads and stuff like that on the website so people can hear your music. Um, one thing I wanted to know, um, cause we're going to transition here cause we're going to talk about trauma. Um, do you feel, <laughs> do you feel like, um, uh, do you feel like your music stems from a place of trying to work through things? Sometimes it does. Um, a, for a while I was like, when I first started making music, I both wanted to come from a serious point and from a very campy place because like a lot of the music i was listening to was like at like when i was making music like when i first started making music i was listening to choice of on uh big dipper and cupcake and like those like for a while are my biggest inspirations and unfortunately you can't hear like my early early stuff anymore because i just pulled it from spotify and most streaming services but you, pull um, it? you can really hear that that influence i pulled it it's gone now but why Oh, because whenever my friends would play my music on shelf at a party and I would hear the older songs, I'm like, this is not a vibe. Y'all, this is not the vibe. Um, <laughs> but like, <laughs> you know, when I wrote like something like uh, like when I wrote Ghost City, like it's a song about like, you know, being in the pandemic with like one person and you're just like driving around this empty city with them because like that's that's all you can do. And you're just missing these times that you had pre-pandemic so that 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 was like me really trying to work through that um i've written a lot of songs out of like trying to get through anger like there's a song bad music that like you know, one time someone sub subtweet took the time out of their day to subtweet me on twitter that's like hi i'm tono listen to my bad music and i'm like what first of all baby you have like 100 followers i know like followers don't mean anything but like you're like preaching to a literal void and i don't understand where i'm managing mouth when i'm a struggling artist of color, <laughs> gay artist of color just trying to vibe you know mm -hmm. what i mean like i don't i don't get it um and yeah and, it, and so i guess i do like write from a standpoint of just trying to work through some things but also sometimes i write because i i want to help fuel a fucking party like you know with see me again that's just, it's like essentially a, a party anthem like i remember going to blow pony one weekend blow pony is a party here that used to happen here in portland um a circuit party and i like see me again came out of that like it's just the the uh audio embodiment of a party on molly that's awesome i like your triple xl song too yeah that's me trying to work through nothing that's that's me telling fat boys please lay on me I mean, T. But like consensually. If you don't want that for yourself, then I will not. I will not view your body as that because kink is consensual, and I only want people who are consenting in this action. I, I am I will literally going to send your body if I, if you want me to. I'm going to literally send this snippet to Roulette. This, this, this clip right here. <laughs> this is going to be the marketing <laughs> clip for this thing. Just going to send it to Roulette. <laughs> Roulette Delgado, the icon. Oh my God, he is beautiful. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I get so flustered around him. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so I also, um, I wanted to know, uh, so I had a couple more things for you before. Cause like, I know this is like running a little long, but I love Tono. Tono is like one of my favorite people. Um, I want to talk about your breakup in one specific aspect. I'm pretty sure you're still broken up. Uh, Cause this is what we talk about on a yes. podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> so have you felt that, did your music, did you have any inspired music from your breakup? 
Or did you make any music after your breakup? I have not written any breakup. It, it takes me a while to work through something like that. Like the relationship I had before this, like I, it took me like over a year to like even draw anything down. And like when my album eventually does come out, there will be a song about that one. Um, mm. But with this last one, I, no, it just takes like a second to like those, like those kinds of emotions. It takes a second to like process through and like to get down on paper or like in my notes app. Um, Cause then I know like eventually that person might hear the music and I want it to be like, perfectly constructed you know i get that i definitely think that when you make a breakup song and you need that lyricist not the lyricist but you need that like cool jazz beat in the background you should definitely consider me because like i love i love me a ballad is is you should definitely do a ballad okay. and i will get that hook for you baby <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yes let's collab i'm trying to collect a whole bunch of like portland drag queens under my belt um, starting with oh Touche Duche. I thought I was going to start off with somebody else, but they fell through on a song twice now. It's fine. Oh, I wonder who it is. I love Jonah gets all squat. He's like, no, I'm not going to tell you. Um, no, it's fine. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I've recognized, I've recognized in this community, though, that there's a lot of talent going around and people... And people should be expressing it and sharing it with as many people as they can. Um, as I said, and I told you as we got towards the end of this uh, interview, that you had to answer my fun question, which is, if you got into a bar fight, which three drag artists in the Portland drag community would you um, want on your side? Okay, so I want to preface this with, I feel like I don't know a lot, a lot of the drag artists in Portland personally enough to accurately answer this question. So I'm giving you some loose answers. You know, first off, we're going mm-hmm. with Stacey Lane Matthews, right? She's got the <laughs> internet on her side. She can put the shit on live and completely terrorize somebody. You know what I mean? Facebook Live, Stacey Lane Matthews beating somebody up. I can see it. I can see, I can mm-hmm. see her whipping her hair, putting it in braids, putting little beads on it, and then just whipping somebody with it. <laughs> like, I can fully see how. That way she doesn't have to, like, get up. She can sit mm-hmm. and do it. Like, it's perfect. Um, mm-hmm. Number two would be Anana, but she would have to be wearing, like, eight-inch stilettos and because she, be, she'll be the tallest bitch in the building and uh, people won't want to go up to her because she'll be intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, she literally doesn't have to do anything. She can stand in the back and she'll still be taller than everybody else. Um, and then Atlas... Because she scares me a little bit. <laughs> I love that. Uh, she gets uh, brought up a lot on here. People are like, that's the girl that they want to help me on their side. Uh, I don't even remember what I said. I know that I wanted Shaniqua Volt as one of mine. She, She's just not the girl to fuck with. And um, she even she, oh, true. She says that to me all the time. She's always like, Coco. I'm like, Shaniqua, what? What? <laughs> it's like. She, God, I love her to death. She's so great. And Atlas is actually really I'm good. I'm switching out Anana for Shaniqua and... so Anana doesn't break a heel. Oh my gosh. I think Anana's tagline, which I love, is uh, she's the tallest queen in captivity. That's what she says. <laughs> yeah, that's her tagline. Tallest queen in captivity. Um, yeah, so, uh, gosh, I'm just like all over the map today. So, a couple of more things before we like drop off today is what is in the future for Tone over the next five years? Ooh, for the next five years. Um, eventually, I'm going to have my album out. Um, it will be done. The The artwork will be beautiful. Aja's going to be on it. I'm manifesting, you know? She costs $500, so it's going to take a minute. Um, I am... I'm going to be touring more than just Portland with my music. I'm going to be uh, um, on the main stage at a couple of different prides, like Seattle Prides, a goal of mine. Um so is uh like sac- some of the california prides like sacramento um i'm gonna be performing at blow pony and barracuda i will be headlining those two they will happen i'll be collaborating with big dipper and uh charlie x will xcx will have met me and, and admired my work you know what i really want to happen from i love all of that you know what i want to happen as i want barracuda <laughs> to take a page out of a uh, blow pony just a little bit and have the bear drag queen and have better cause... music Oh, yeah, yeah, that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Also sorry that. we're going in a different direction. Well, no, I just, I think it would be cool, like, because Blow Pony does, like, the couple of drag queens or whatever. I think it'd be so cool if Barracuda did, like, there are five, I think, like, bear drag queens who either have beards or into burly men. 
that would love that opportunity so much, myself included. I like my boys thick. And, like, I just think that that would be such Same. a cool vibe. Or even if he hired, like, those five drag queens to, like, be shot girls or something like that and, like, live up the fantasy. I think that that would be so cool to have that in that vibe. Because I was there just, like, last weekend and whatever, and my I had some interesting experiences with that. But, like, literally wa- looking around the room and just seeing, like, everything that you beat off to in porn... Sorry, mom. Um, it's just kind of cool, like <laughs> being in a club like that. So, I mean, that's why I like going to the Eagle. That's why I like being there. Yeah, it makes sense. So, as we get to the end of our episode, um, the last little bit is um, so this episode will come out to m- um, for you, Tona, tomorrow. Uh, what, uh, what, what things Thursday? do you have? Yes, what things do you have coming up that oh. you over the next week that you want to promote? Oh, things for me to promote. I'm so good at this. So, I have an I have my first like production, uh, ever technically where there are performers and stuff at local lounge. It's called yes. Time to Get Spooky, and it starts yes. at nine o'clock on Friday the first. It features me, uh, my friend Yuck, who makes music, Roulette Delgado, Craven Valentine, Henny Lejade, Brit Neon. It is a spooky live music and drag event that you're not going to want to miss to kick off the holiday seasons. There's going to be decorations because I'm going to be coming early inside and I'm going to decorate. If y'all haven't decorated already for the first, I will be help decorating. Um, there's going to be new music from me because i am coming out with a th- the third installment te- well technically second installment to my hollow ep series called hollow ep returns and the first single ufo featuring high yellow will be out on the 8th so it's not something y'all are gonna want to miss yes come to out support tona everybody thank you so much tona for being on this has been a really great interview we i think we got a lot out of it we got a lot of kink we got a lot of music which is things like it's kind of your brand and your brand i feel like your brand is really secure right now like i feel like you're on the up and up you're rising like i'm manifesting for you like i really appreciate what you do your music is great um we're also like friends and stuff like that and so i have a high opinion of you because of that too but you're also just like one of those chill people to be around um, you're an excitable person who's always on a thousand, but <laughs> outside of that, like it's it's actually kind of cool. It's always nice to have somebody in your corner like that. Thank you. And even honestly, even when I'm off, it's still like a jittery off. <laughs> um, I do have one more thing to promote. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, I love you so much. Thank you. I your friendship means a lot to me. Um, before I promote, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do have one more thing to promote. It's not this next week. It's at the end of the month, October twenty second. If you live in Portland, uh, if you want to, you know dip your toe into the pup scene you're already in the pup scene maybe you have your member tag you can get into this event for free it's called a woo it's a pup and pet dance party that i will be hosting along with pdx pa you get to adopt a human pet there and there will be a uh there's gonna be a special performance ain't no cat call it's a yes. dog whistle if you know what i mean yes absolutely that's awesome that's also so local cool. lounge. yeah also support local lounge <laughs> Thank you so much, Tona. Um, and as everybody who here is listening, we are here every Thursday with our beautiful interviews. And we will be putting all of the stuff that I hopefully will remember to put on our website to support Tona the Rapper. So, bye, everybody. Goodbye. This has been another episode of A Gem of a Secret Podcast. The hosts of A Gem of a Secret Podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at The Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a J E M of a secret podcast.com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.